There are so many new skills coming in the Expedition League that making the choice of my potential League starter seems to be a Sisyphean task. However, with the changes to poison damage and some very tasty budget options in Daggers and Claws, Poison Blade Trap looks to be a mighty fine starter. Welcome, it's your friendly neighborhood Badger here, and I'm back with my first build idea coming in 3.15. Right off the bat, as this is a new skill, this is not a build guide. I have not tested, obviously, any of the new skills, but with my prior knowledge of Path of Exile, coupled with the information we've received thus far, I'm confident in showcasing what I will most likely be League starting with in Expedition. Presenting Poison Blade Trap Saboteur. Blade Trap is a very unique trap skill coming in 3.15, as it benefits from your weapons. That's right, it is an attack trap. Unlike trap support itself, this trap is based on your one-handed claws, swords, or daggers equipped, and thus works very nicely with both archetypes of critical strike and poison. Saboteur not only is in a perfect spot on the tree to slurp up as many nodes as possible in this regard, it also has now one of the best ailment mitigation ascendancy points, with many other forms being nerfed. Pyromaniac is still immune to shock and ignite. This means that all we have to solve is freeze, and that's as simple as a benchcraft on boots, once unlocked. Now, scaling poison, critical, and traps all at once might seem like a lot, but keep in mind the buffs to poison damage this league, as well as the synergy with critical strike multiplier and perfect agony. Scaling our flat damage will be amazingly easy with coated shrapnel, a no limit cluster jewel giving us amazing physical damage to traps when placed in the right positions on the tree, and you can stack as many as you like. Lastly, dual wielding a Beano's Kitchen Knife for clear proliferation and a wasp nest to carry the damage, this budget version of the build looks like it has great potential for clear, as well as boss killing. As always, I'll be including the color-coded sections below. Future Badger will talk about the gear choices first, and then go over the passive tree selections, lastly finishing off with a very small section on how we would go about leveling this skill. Alrighty, let's jump into it. Alrighty, we're going to get into it. Now, right before we do get into it, as I've already mentioned in the previous part of this video, this is a build idea, and I haven't played around with the skill itself yet. And the other thing is, as the releasing of this video, the new skills are not updated in Path of Building yet. Now, we have got an update with uh, most of the values of support gems and everything like that, but it's still going to be really hard for me to show you the exact DPS that we're going to be getting out of this skill right here. So I'm actually using Cyclone to sock it in. Now, Cyclone means that we're not getting any damage from any sort of trap support gems or anything like that, or trap stuff on the tree. And we're also not getting any damage uh, through uh, scaling the attack speed or anything like that. The damage you see over here, 124,000 dot DPS, uh, right here of the total, uh, is with Cyclone fully stacked up, but that's, you know, that's one Cyclone. Just think of Cyclone happening, maybe with a little less attack speed, but 15 to 20 times. Then trying to plus all of the damage of uh, all of your trap uh, support gems and everything. Oh, sorry, trap, uh, uh, trap passive skill trees and everything like that around here. Now, look, uh, once again, it's really hard for me to showcase exactly what this is going to look like. But if you could please try and trust me in, in me saying that this looks good. It looks good as a league starter. Now, I've tried to be really, really generous in the kind of budget stuff I'm giving you. The most expensive thing in terms of gear that we're probably talking about is Tinker Skin. There's going to be a lot of people playing traps. Tinker Skin's going to be really expensive. However, you can just forego Tinker Skin for, you know, a good life chest piece with some resistances on it. Now, the other weapons I'm showcasing, as I said previously, are the Wasp Nest for some damage and Beano's Kitchen Knife for clear. Now, I'm almost 99% sure that this poison enemy, uh, killing a poison enemy nearby enemies of poison will work with these traps. If it doesn't, it's going to be okay. You're still going to have a good amount of area. You can just dual wield wasp's nest, or you can just craft a really basic dagger like this Psy right here. Now, this is going to be pretty easy to craft. You might be able to get 250 DPS ones. You don't need to worry too much about attack speed because that's not really going to be scaling what you're doing right there. But let's just switch back to these two right here. Basically, everything else is looking like life and resistances. Life right here, life and resistances here, life resistant move speed. If you can get the cannot be frozen craft, that's just going to be absolutely amazing for you. And then things like, you know, Onyx Amulet to stack out some rest of your uh, your passives, uh, sorry, your, your attributes. Uh, one thing that's going to be interesting potentially to play around it with is a Warden's Brand. It's going to be giving you a lot of physical damage to attacks. And the reduced attack speed is not going to matter too much. 
Although we will probably be using Whirling Blades as a move speed, so this might feel pretty shit. Uh, maybe just go back to a Steel Ring or some other ring right there. A Leather Belt, Diamond Flask, Quicksilver Flask, Chemist Divine Flask, and then a Sins Rebirth, a uh, and then a Chemist Jade Flask Reflexes, and this is looking pretty good. Now, once again, a Code of Shrapnel is pretty nice in certain situations. Um, and I'm still going to be playing around with all of this. Once again, this is very much a build idea. I will be playing this build on League Start, so please follow along. I'm going to be releasing one video every day on my up-to-date tree, how it's feeling. So if you want to play and follow along, you can do that. Uh, that's all I really have to say about the gear itself. Obviously, there's going to be endgame updates, and they will be coming in later videos. So just please stay tuned with that as I upgrade myself. Obviously, things like Slave Driver's Hands and a bunch of other trap stuff coming through with some big crafted daggers at the end of that is basically what's going to come through. The links themselves, once again, are very basic and it's just an idea. Once again, we don't have Blade Trap, uh, so I'm substituting Cyclone right here. So we've got our main skill, Cyclone. Now, I do have a six linked. Let's, we can we can tick off the uh, the sixth link if you want. You can do whatever you want around here. But Cyclone is linked with five skills that work with Cyclone. But you're probably going to be switching out Cluster Traps and Trap and Mind Damage because Trap and Mind Damage still is giving you a very, very hefty amount of Trap and Mind Damage. Um, uh, actually, I think that might have been changed. I'm not entirely sure. It might have been changed. But Cluster Traps are just going to mean you'll be going to be throwing a bunch more traps down right there. And then potentially Charge Traps for the Crit Strike Multi if you get a bunch more Power Charges there as well. Because you're going to be keeping up your Frenzy and Power Charges throughout this whole thing. Once again, Cyclone is showing a much uh, smaller DPS than what your traps are actually going to be giving you. Uh, so I really, really do think that this is going to be very strong. Uh, I definitely want to use this new Defiance banner. I think it's just going to be really, really great to just have and chuck down. Um, although, uh, I will have to solve some reservation issues here, potentially taking out something like a Herald of Agony. Uh, a Precision is probably needed here, and then Despair, probably self-cast, or you can maybe get Despair on here somewhere. Malevolence is obviously going to be giving you a bunch of damage, and against bosses, you can use a Vile Blight. Now, we can take that off, we can take that on. And then a Whirling Blades at the end here with Fortify and Faster Attacks. Once again, this is extremely basic. This is not a full build guide right here. I hope to have one in the future of this uh, of this skill uh, and of this build once it's done. But I am not confident in filling out absolutely everything without fully playtesting it myself. However, if you want to play along, it's right there for you. So I'm going to move on now to the passive skill tree section so you can see how I'm building all of that with basically a leveling section through that as well. All right, let's talk about the passive skill tree itself. We're gonna start with the ascendancy choices because they're pretty important on Saboteur. Now I do think this could be played on other ascendancies, but obviously Saboteur is definitely going to be sitting the nicest with all of the changes coming through with traps and everything like that, uh, and poison damage, and Saboteur's quality of life really just shines. So first of all, I would say go into Perfect Crime and Chain Reaction as your normal and cruel lab. Chain Reaction is just going to mean you're going to get that area of effect and the traps triggering, the nearby traps also triggering right there within the cooldown recovery rate of uh, throwing traps. All of that's really, really nice. Thirdly, I would definitely tank Pyromaniac to just give you a bunch more quality of life with being immune to Ignite and Shock and getting a bunch of life per second one when uh, detonating traps. Uh, and then Born in Shadows as your final uh, Labyrinth or final Ascendancy point there to give you a bunch more survivability. Now, obviously, I didn't mention this in the gear choices, but this is a softcore build and a very, very budget version right now. We're not talking at all about Cluster Jewels. Uh, we're sitting on 4.3k life, but we've got a bunch of dodge and attack dodge with a hefty amount of evasion uh, and some other stuff right here in terms of blinding all of your enemies around you. So you are going to be uh, relatively safe if you don't get hit. You will take some chunky hits, however, but this is a soft core version of the build. Now, we can see the tree here sprawls all the way uh, through the uh, shadow area, down through the ranger area, picking up maybe a frenzy charge, potentially another one if you want to, and then coming up all the way through picking up a couple of life nodes and some uh, uh, nodes right here. Now, this is subject to change because I will be experimenting with this. I like to be uh, a little bit wishy-washy in my experimentations. So if you're the kind of person that doesn't really enjoy that, wants it to be as perfect as possible, I am sorry to you out there. I'm going to be uh, trying to fix this as we go on. But I do have down here a 20 point by point uh, leveling process 
of how I potentially will go about leveling this build right here up to 100 and then the end game at the end right there. Once again, cluster jewels, I'm not including them because honestly, the damage over time cluster jewels got massively nerfed and I'm not even sure if it's even worth it branching into cluster jewels right here. Obviously, you'd be taking out some of the damage for some more life if you feel uh, that you are dying a lot more, potentially taking, taking a couple more jewel slots to fit in some nice jewels around here uh, if you would like to, uh, but that is totally up to you. So it's a level 95 tree sitting right here. Uh, and that's everything uh, that I want to talk about with the skill tree itself. Lastly, I'm just going to talk a little bit about how I will level this because once again, we haven't played it, but I'm going to be trying leveling blade uh, blade trap the whole way through. So let's talk about that. All right. Now, once again, I'm going to talk at very basically about how I would level this build. Uh, I feel it's going to carry me through it. Now, I know a lot of people uh, do struggle with the leveling process a bit, and look, Act 1's going to be a little bit rough. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to get through that with the classic setup of Stormblast Mines and Orb of Storms until level 12. Now, remember, if you need to do any upgrades to your weapons themselves, uh, you can do the uh, weapon craft. Uh, and pick on, picking up Blade Trap at level 12, because you can pick that one up on a Shadow at level 12. Now you're hopefully going to be getting a green, green, red uh, three link setup with blade trap, chance to bleed, and swift assembly. And you're going to be crafting two one handed swords, maybe even daggers, maybe even claws, uh, with the rustic sash rep uh, recipe, which is a magical rare rustic sash, the weapon uh, that you have yourself uh, that you want to craft on, and then a whetstone, a blacksmith's whetstone. You can do a little bit of grinding. I'm sure the league mechanic's going to pop out some nice currency if you do want to uh, grind up a bunch of that kind of stuff. Act 2, you're going to continue to destroy things in your path with Blade Trap, hopefully. Uh, picking up a Herald of Purity for some damage, picking up Skitterbots, and then picking up Trap and Mine damage. So your green, green, green links this time around are going to be Blade Trap, Trap and Mine damage, and Swift Assembly. Now remember to keep upgrading your weapons as you go along, because Blade Trap will be scaling with your weapons. It's not going to be scaling with gem levels like other traps will. In Act 3, you're going to be getting a 4-link, hopefully, uh, adding in charge trap support. So your green, 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 uh, no, green, 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 uh, green, that should say, not green, 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 red. Green, 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 red of blade trap, trap and mine, swift assembly, and charged traps. Now, once again, remember to keep upgrading your weapons. Now, I know I'm missing out on a, a few of the other kind of supporting things. Hopefully, you're going to be picking up a Whirling Blades to be able to uh, get some nice movement going around through all of that as well. Uh, and even a Flame Dash to go over some bigger gaps if you do need it. Remember, Flame Dash has been pretty nerfed, but it's good for a one-time use now to get over uh, certain uh, other areas. Now, Act 4. At the end of Act 4, around about level 38, you're ready to switch to Poison. So you should have enough poison on the tree uh, and a four link and maybe even luckily a five link if you're really lucky, um, but uh, you're probably not gonna have a five link. You're gonna be using blade trap, trap and mind damage, swift assembly and chance to poison. And you're also gonna want to switch to Herald of Agony uh, around this time as well. Now picking up a, I'm actually gonna write right here, picking up a um, uh, withering step, picking up a withering step and uh, what's the other one called? Uh, Plague Bearer to help with clear as you are walking around because those are both going to help with clear to help with clear. And then buy and equip if possible around this time two Morton Morsu Claws. Now if you're zipping through the content then uh, they might not even be on the market but uh, if uh, you are a little bit slower you might have some one chaos, two chaos Morton Morsu Claws if you don't have the Chaos, just grind the League Mechanic for a little bit if you can in some lower level content, and you're definitely going to get those Chaos Orbs extremely quickly. From here on, Mortem Morsu should carry until a Binos and a Wasp's Nest. If not, craft higher level Daggers or Swords, and pick up Coated Shrapnel when you can. It is going to be super, super nice. That's basically it. Uh, once again, it's extremely, extremely basic, a, a bare bone skeleton, but if you want more detailed uh, outlook about how this is going to level, come and watch me on stream, potentially succeed or potentially fail, but most likely succeed, because I do have some pretty high hopes with this one right here. That's all I really have to say. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, if you're looking for a full build guide, the reason I'm not releasing a full build guide is because I don't want to screw you guys over. This is something that if you want to play it, definitely play it at your own risk. Uh, because it is a new skill and uh, we don't know 100% how this is going to function, but I think it's going to function fairly well. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. If you enjoy this content, hit that sub button down below. And as always, Badger is out.